Namaste everyone. Very warm welcome to Satsang today. Sadhguru Shri Muji Baba Ki Jai. Firstly, let's uh, all send all our love and blessings to Sahaja, to Monte Sahaja. Of course, uh, Guruji's grace is taking care of everything. It was so beautiful to see the message uh, that they shared because even after such a big event in worldly terms, Guruji kept pointing us to the reality of what is, in spite of what the event might have been, and the seeming intensity of it for the, red, the residents there. The pointing is very clear, even in these times, that that which you are, remains untouched. Bhagavan was uh, relentless in his pointing of the question, who am I? That itself is a huge clue. <laughs> The great sage himself kept reminding us to ask ourselves, who is it that I am? So obviously it was clear to him that most of humanity has picked up a concept about itself, which is not true. And in clarifying, in coming to the truth about who you are, in coming to the insight about who you are, and all this confusion that we call suffering becomes alien. And most of us are convinced about who we are. Especially if there are some who are new to satsang. And we've been looking at this fill in the blank, isn't it? What are we filling the blank with? I am blank. So some will fill the name there. I am, whatever the name is. Then you ask, so what does that name represent? And the name represents a body in this world. What does the world represent? What is the world right now? Just a set of perceptions, isn't it? If one by one these perceptions were to vanish, the world, these outer perceptions, outer seeming perceptions, 
and these inner seeming perceptions that which we call the body sensations the, the visuals of the body if all this was to vanish would the perceiver also vanish at what point does the perceiver go so the world became completely quiet and all visual perception also stopped are you still there or no if these sensations that you call the body they also were not felt for some time are you still there or no this like the space between two thoughts it just continued and there are no thoughts then are you still there or no if you were feeling no emotion at the present time are you still there if all these perceptions were not there do you still exist or are you also another perception are you an appearance the master has said find out that which witnesses all appearances are you also an appearance what witnesses you then so beyond an object of perception what can you put in that box i am something how many will make the mistake everyone is with me so far it cannot be an object of perception <laughs> then what can you replace it with that i am something can become i am something conceptual i don't have a perception of it so i must be something which is non perceptual but what do i know about that that i know is the self okay? we can have a concept of the self and put it in that box actually even otherwise when we say i am the body or i am the mind these are also just concepts we created a set of sensations and we created a idea about these sensations and called it body we created a set of constructs energy constructs which we call the mind so these are already just conceptual but you could take on a concept which seems higher than that higher than the perceptual constructs and say i am the self but you find that just using the intellect and saying that i am the self or i am awareness doesn't also help this is what the intellect does is it intellect now is understood that i cannot be an object which is witnessed so i must be something which is the perceiver is it so what is that that must be the self but this is also still just an idea so if you were to say that no idea can be the reality of you 
because all ideas are also constantly changing. So now you cannot put any perception in the box, I am something. You cannot put any concept in the box, I am something. Are we left with anything now? If no object I am, if no concept I am, And when I say object, I'm including all perception, including feelings, thoughts, everything. Then what is left? Our mind cannot help us here. Intellect cannot help us here. The greatest intellect will have great trouble having this insight. But the most childlike innocence, with the childlike wonder, this will be the most apparent, the most obvious. So don't strain yourself. Strain means that you're using, trying to use your mind or intellect. Just a childlike wonder. What is here that is beyond perception? Don't force anything at all. And remain in this innocence. Because everything else comes after the idea that I am an object. What should I do? Why am I here? <laughs> all these existential questions all come. Only after you pick up the notion of being something. Either a concept or an object. Both are the same. Just notionally. That is why this is the main question. Who am I? So when I say that on this side of being, there are all these phenomena, what I mean is all these perceptions. But what's on this side of being? Is it just perception? Perception is that all you are? Or is there something beyond this play of phenomena? That which is the unchanging. This phenomena is what? It's constantly changing. So you woke up this morning and here you are now. All this phenomena has been there for you to taste. You've tasted all of it. But before this phenomena, Besides this perception, is there nothing else?
and if it is only perception only phenomena then you must be one which one are you and what witness is that Now, if it is the Sadhguru's grace, then we are blessed with something that we call devotion. Devotion means that this life is my master's problem. Let him run it. But not just this life. Everything that I considered myself to be is now offered up at his feet. In that devotion, everything that is in the box, I am something, all this something is now emptied out at my father's feet. This is a beautiful unburdening. That's why I say that the devotee is not being a devotee. The devotee is not one who is saying, I am a devotee. They are empty of this notion also. This is the best, best part about having a master. It is that whatever the mind has to offer you is nothing of your concern now. It is all the masters to deal with. What I have to do, where I have to go, how will I run my life? But if you still feel like you have your way or you want it your way, then is it true that you have a master? This is only <laughs> having the starter of the seven course meal then. <laughs> if you feel that the master is just somebody who comes and tells you nice things you know, for a few hours, <laughs> the rest of it then you have to do and take care of and then you have to go back to your running your life. You know, just eating the starter. <laughs> the whole meal is laid out for you. This is what I meant when I said that you either have a master or you have your way. Now the mind will create some weird 
notions of this and say, oh, this is some sort of being subservient or something like that. It's none of that. It's nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with whether you touch the master's feet or whether you do seva or not. It is only about saying that you, Father, are the one that runs this life now. Everything moves with your will. There is no me here to do anything at all. If there is suffering, then you are suffering. Whatever action there is, is your action. Because I don't find a me who is doing or experiencing any of this. That's why Bhagwan gave us these very beautiful metaphors. He said, do you get on a train and start running towards the destination inside the train? <laughs> no. You're on the Guru train. Of course, he didn't say the last part. <laughs> You're on the Guru train, which is running on Guru power. What better way to run this life? It's only the voice of individuality which will come and say, but, but, okay, but this is okay for Satsang, but what about my job? But what about money? But what if he messes up or she messes up? <laughs> this but. What is the alternative that the but is offering? The alternative is that I can do it. Who is this I? That I don't know. <laughs> but I can do it. It's so funny, isn't it? It's just like this. But I can do it. I don't know who this I is, but I can. <laughs> is there anything funnier? And yet the hypnosis has been so strong that this is how we live believed our life to be done. I did this, I did that. I didn't do this, I didn't do that. Who? That I don't know. And very few even come to this beautiful admitting I don't know. Many are just naming a fictional entity and saying that one did. It's like saying that some entity called Ananta is speaking all these words. It's completely false. <laughs> there is nobody here called Ananda. <laughs> it's just a theoretical notion that we are calling. So this appearance in this form. <laughs> These words are just arising from the same. the same voice which has reminded you over and over in many different forms over many different lifetimes. And he says, even I can't do it, it's not applicable. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
because it's not about the can can do or cannot do. It's about who the I is. Those who are blessed with even a little bit of devotion, a little bit of temperament of surrendering, just hand it over. Hand over the hand overer. <laughs> Surrender the surrenderer. There is nobody there. There is nobody here. There just is nobody. All there is is one being, one self. You've looked inside the body, you've looked outside the body. Have you found somebody? It's just not there. There is nobody with your name on it. <laughs> nobody with your name on it. Now in this marketplace of sensation that we call the world, it's full of all different varied type of sensations. And it is not the sensations in themselves which are causing trouble. It is our mental interpretation of those sensations. So I was just discussing before Satsang that one of the concepts which causes maybe the most trouble it's the concept of mind. A set of sensations, they arise. And somewhere we picked up the concept that they are mind. It could be another body, it could be a house, it could be some money, it could be whatever the perception might be. In the minute we attach with the mind, <laughs> then somebody try pulling this set of perceptions away, this set of sensations away, what happens? All the suffering, I can't live, I'm so attached, I'm so... <laughs> but what is it? Just a set of perceptions, a set of sensations. Without the concept mind, there is no such thing as attachment. But even for mind, there is an overriding concept called me. Without me, can there be a mind? And this me, nobody has found. It's just a big misinterpretation, a big misunderstanding. That only these sensations is me, and the rest of the appearance is not me. Or any appearance is me at all. All this is just interpretation, isn't it? Now, what is it that you are right now?
Aman said that there's a mild sense of a doer which comes. But are you that sense? Or are you perceiving even that? Nothing which comes stays. Everything that comes goes. So then if you are that which comes, then you will also have to go, who saw this coming? And who will see this going? And another thing, another thing I want to tell you is that don't try to fix something for some future you. The one that is going to be there after satsang. There's nobody here now. There will not be somebody after satsang. Okay? So many times we're coming to satsang and saying, oh, this is okay for me now, but what, what happened after satsang gets over? <laughs> it is not okay for you now. It is consciousness itself which is recognizing itself. And there will not be another one also after satsang. Okay? Because this is one doubt, one thing that I keep hearing over and over again. Father, it's okay in satsang, but after satsang, how do I? This, what I'm saying, applies to you, whether you're in satsang or not. You see it clearly now. That much is enough. This notion of something happened to me yesterday and what will happen to me tomorrow, all these are just the same tricks of the mind trying to keep the notion of me alive. You cannot conclusively say that anything has happened to you. Even if you were an object, all your memories could be false. <laughs> you are not that object anyway. What defines your boundary? How long is consciousness going to let a sensation define its boundary? When will it decide to look beyond? And see, oh, actually this sensation is appearing within me. This is the play of consciousness. Go beyond this play of name and form, of me and mine, of doership and desire. This is the voice of your alarm clock. And look beyond. You only set it for yourself. Now it is ringing. <laughs> Look beyond. Are you contained in a name? Are you contained in a form? 
is something for me, is something really mine. You are the eternal one, the unborn, the undying. What can you own? What can you leave behind? What position can you take? How long will you continue to point at some sensation and say, this is me? Then the mind starts playing with another trick. It says, yes, yes, you've seen this clearly now. You're so free. Will others start to recognize you as that? Can they see my level of my inner insight? You who now? Who's the insight? <laughs> Again, the limited me. Starting to worry about how the expression is looking to the rest of the world. As I Bhagavan said it best, he said, somebody said how, how to deal with others. He said, there are no others. <laughs> oh, might have started like that, the question, okay, we're presuming. <laughs> like, ah, Bhagavan, <laughs> now I've discovered myself. How do I deal with others? <laughs> Haven't you discovered there are no others? <laughs> what do you mean by others? Still defining something, some the body boundary, the mental boundary, some emotional boundary as your boundary. Some name as you, some form as you, some idea of me as me. That is the problem. Like Claire said that way, yes. that I, uh, we were playing this but game, no? we were saying I, but what? So she said I. <laughs> so this is the trouble. Is it? I, but I. Small I, right? this limited I, this body I, this sense of a me seems to be localized, seems to have a reference point. That is the only only but actually, whatever else might come. But the notion of this limited eye is the only one which the mind keeps offering. So then it says, I'm seeing all this, I'm seeing I'm unlimited, but I. <laughs> what does it mean for me? Nothing. There is no me. Will my life get better? Who can say? What is better? <laughs> but you said the Guru will take care of everything. <laughs> I didn't say Guru will take care of everything according to your mind's plan, did I? <laughs> it's not a cheat code to write. And you start to see how beautifully, even in the so-called trouble that all of us seem to have to some extent, everything is being managed so beautifully.
I'm looking around this room. I'm looking in the so, and I I don't know that all of you have some or the other trouble going on in life. Yet, in, even in all of this, if you were to just look at the beauty of this existence, you are here now. Is there a greater miracle than this? You actually exist. Your existence is here. The greatest beyond phenomena, <laughs> non-phenomenal truth, decided to experience itself as existence. I am. You, you are that. Taste this truth about yourself. We worry about the me and mine later for just a little while. I exist. There comes a point in satsang where this very almost ultimate question is asked. Are you in the truth? Are you for the truth? Just for the sake of truth itself? Or because of the idea or benefit that it might bring? And if you can answer that you are in it for the truth no matter what it brings, But if you feel that, oh, but my truth should be this way, it should help my life in this way, it should be like that, it should be like this, then you can keep playing this game. Okay? The truth just for the sake of truth. With no guarantee about anything at all. Not even, no guarantee of peace, no guarantee of joy, nothing, forget about it. Because it is these guarantees which get in the way of them anyway. But even that I don't want to tell you as a reassurance. <laughs> Is it? In it, or oh, just the truth. Is that your heart's deepest longing now? No matter what other phenomenal things it brings or doesn't bring. If you can't understand the Ananda part of Satchitananda, <laughs> Are you in it for the Sato Chit or you without Ananda it's not worth it? <laughs> this is it. So at this point, consciousness decides to play this way or the other way. If it truly comes to this point where it's done with the play of me. Away. But if it felt somewhere that because of coming to the truth, me will get something, I will get something. Then you start to realize one day in satsang that it's not working to plan. with no benefits. And if any of you feel that oh actually it's been a search for some benefit then don't pick up guilt or unworthiness about it. It is not, the point is not to make you feel guilty anymore. The point is just to Shine your light on that, which you feel should happen. This is a chance to drop it, not to make guilt out of it. Chance to shine your own light and see, I'm in this for something. 
But even in that notion, what am I considering myself to be? The false, you see. So many times our notions of our limitation can hide behind these expectations of something coming through spirituality. Expectation that something should happen because I surrender. Who does the I represent? with integrity, if you look at this question. Then you're shining a very bright light of your own seeing. And the falls cannot survive the brightness of this light. So I can say it is time to stop playing games, but I know consciousness will play the game as long as it likes. <laughs> and this is just a game again to, for me to have said that. But suppose we were to say that. <laughs> Stay with your insight. Don't pick up any notion about yourself. Because no notion is worthy of you. So we're not just shifting our attributes. We're not going from doer to non-doer, from desirer to non-desirer. We're removing the landing spot for these attributes. The I itself, the limited I which considers itself either the doer or the non-doer, either the me with the mind or the me who is the renunciate, neither we are talking about. Neither to accept nor to renounce. Ashtavakra said. Neither doing nor not doing. No position. When you refer to yourself as I, see where this I takes off from. Is it taking off from some idea you have about yourself? What is the source of this I? And when I say you, see where the you is landing. You. You. <laughs> Where does it land? Does it land in a set of sensations which you say is me? Does it land on empty space? In dark empty room? Is that you? Are you just a visual? Are you some emotion? 
Are you all your thoughts about yourself? Where does it land? Thank you for allowing me to share with such directness, getting right to the root of the matter. Thank you all so much for being in Satsang today. Sadhguru Shri Muji Baba Ki Jai. Sadhguru Sri Ki Jai Montesahaja Ki Jai